Good afternoon, dear friends. I have been preparing this stream for quite a long time, and I really wanted to, to discuss uh, the essential question for many artists, for many cameramen, the issue, the influence of the color on the physiology and psychology of a person, on the person's perception of the color. And in the cinematography, we have the founder of this work of the color, the cinematographer who has uh, lots of lots of awards, lots of uh, prizes. The person who is the guru of this work with the light is the Italian cinematographer Vittorio Storaro. And he has done quite a lot of movies, uh, the Apocalypse Now, the Confirmist. People who are watching our stream actually are supposed to know these movies. And today, uh, together with me, I have a very remarkable doctor, Andrew Ushakov, the, the master of medicine, and I'm not going to enumerate all his degrees and ranks because it will eat up all our time allocated for the stream. And another person is a remarkable, fantastic artist, a blogger, Adis Gajeev, also a teacher, and I am not going to enumerate all his ranks and degrees as well because, well, he is quite a person of our time. And I'm happy I've managed to put together all these fantastic people. And we are going to discuss the main principles uh, of the color in the cinematography, the principles uh, which were formulated by Vittorio Storaro. Well, at first, I want to, to give the floor to Andrei and then to Anis. And actually, my plan is to try to manage within the stream time to speak about all the postulates, all the principles by Vittorio Storaro. And so now let's talk about it from the point of view of science and medicine. Okay, so let's start with a paradox, because from the point of view of science, there is no color and no light. They do not exist until we have a spectator, a viewer. Well, in principle, so what happens? So we try to make it as simple as possible. So we irritate the receptor in our uh, vision apparatus, and we see only the colors that are vital for our life. We don't see the uh, infrared or ultraviolet. And then there is the process of reorganizing of the signal. Then we decipher the signal, and then it uh, goes to the cortex of the brain. And that's where we give attributes to the images. So if a child is shown grass and, sh and he said that it is green, he will call the grass in future green. But if he said that it is red, then he will call it red. So conditionally, uh, we may perceive the color physiologically and psychologically. So these are the two main issues. And then probably later on we'll talk about the uh, truth and mistakes of Vittorio Storaro. So Aziz, what do you think about the color? Well, uh, actually, I cannot go as deep as uh, Andre has done so, and his deciphering actually appeals to me. I liked it really very much, the scientific point of view. But I'm going to talk just, well, as an artist. The artist who was brought up uh, within the, the arts atmosphere. So what I have come to actually now, uh, I consider that I have five tools that can uh, uh, affect the subconscious of a person, of the audience. And actually, these are the tools that any cinematographer would use or any person who deals with a visual culture. And so among these tools, the color is uh, number two. So number one among my tools, well, actually, it's my subjective point of view. 
So I think that the first tool that works on our subconscious is the silhouette. Well, some people may agree, some may disagree with me, and uh, uh, for each tool I find an artist, and uh, for this number one is Saint Michelangelo. The second tool is the color, no matter how much I would like to put it uh, further on, so it's the color, because the person, the viewer, perceives first of all the silhouette and then the color. And, uh, well, the master of color, in my opinion, the master of color who first started to use not just the color but the combination of the colors for the drama of the painting was teaching the cello. The third tool, so that uh, we could talk about all tools, it's composition and it's Tintoretto who was a student of teaching and uh, he always referred people to him to, to learn colors. So the, th the next tool is Caravaggio. The fourth tool is shade color, Stanobroso, Chiaro, Scuro, as Italians say, and the next instrument is, is aerial and linear perspective, and in my ranks of tables it's uh, the fifth instrument, and Jan Vermeer uh, von Delft is responsible for this. Of course, many artists are responsible for all these tools, but these are the masters, uh, the locomotives. Well, the color is Tizian. And uh, though uh, the color is the second tool in my table of ranks, it's one of the most powerful tools. Because uh, the color can drive a person to a certain uh, emotion. It could calm it down or it could uh, excite him. And of course, I use color in my painting, in my work. Well, probably lots of words, but that's what it is. Well, it's wonderful. Now I want to add a few words from the point of view of a cameraman. Well, for me, the color is a remarkable language, and I can use this language talking with the director of the movie and use it in our dialogue. Cameramen uh, quite frequently, when they work uh, with the color, sometimes uh, use some subconscious things. They managed to learn uh, at school, at the college, and as cameramen, usually are people of very few words, uh, they never talk about the analysis, what color is uh, its analysis, how it influences the color. But I think it's really important. I'm very glad that now we have this meeting, this discussion, and people uh, who are interested could be engrossed in this uh, topic. Uh, another thing, uh, well, uh, actually, when I uh, have been conducting quite a lot of seminars on the work with the lights. Uh, I saw a frame, a slide, uh, and it showed that there is a, a certain theme, a certain idea, then there is a certain visualization of this idea, and the color stands apart because it influences the viewer at the same time, simultaneously with all other influences, uh, with the silhouette, with the mini silhouette, with the gestalt psychology ideas, etc., etc. So the color influences the viewer, the human being, simultaneously with the rest. Well, uh, since uh, we don't have lots of time of our stream, now I suggest we go directly to speaking about each separate color. So what has been talked about by Vittorio Straro in his uh, movie Painting with Light and there are, well, certain uh, principal postulates. So we try to follow these postulates well, first. Uh, first, we'll start with the red color. For Vittorio Straro, the red color is passion. Andrei, from the point of view of physiology, from the point of view of medicine, what color, what the red color means for the audience? Well, uh, first of all, uh, the colors I have already mentioned uh, uh, could be 
mm, could be attributed psychologically or culturally. And so uh, throughout history, the color could uh, get uh, different ideas depending on the culture. Well, uh, the gold uh, of the churches, uh, of the icons, uh, it's not because it uh, it is something sacred, but uh, it, it just brings us higher. Now, the red color is something that deals with trauma, something that deals with the injury, because this is the color of the blood. That's why we react to the red color, first of all, from the point of view of our physiology, so it's the outburst of adrenaline, because the body thinks this is blood, the, I'm losing blood, so I have to heighten my tonus, I have to tone me up, I have to bring up my blood pressure, because it's necessary for me to get away from the tiger who has just wounded me. And well, of course, now we can speak about the red color, the color of passion, uh, the, the street of the red lights, for example. Uh, this is the physiological influence of the red color. That's why, that's why we are talking about different cycles of the circle. And then from the point of your psychology, we can talk about it. Well, any girl in the in a red dress would attract a man because this is the color of the blood. So this is our victim and we have to catch up with it. And if we have, for example, such an, a test, an experiment, you will leave a person in a room which is completely red, the person might get a stroke. The body would think that uh, the body is losing blood, and so the body wants to bring up to increase the blood pressure, and by this we can get this stroke. So this influence is, well, strictly physiological. And so, uh, actually, the uh, Lynch Room and the Twin Peaks movie, uh, that's about the same. It is now your turn. Well, Andrei has uh, talked uh, very, uh, very precisely about the influence of the red color, about the passion of the red color. But, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I give to my audience a certain task. Uh, I ask them to uh, to compose a certain uh, code uh, make so please uh, put up together the colors of the covid for example and in my opinion it's not the color itself that specifies something but the combination of colors and the amount of this or that color together with other other colors and of course in my opinion, the red color is, of course, the same scale. It's the passion. At the same time, it's aggression. Also, the red color could mean the birth of something. And again, in combination with something else. If uh, a certain amount of red is surrounded by a great amount of black, this would mean tragedy. If a certain amount of red is surrounded by a huge amount of blue, then it would mean something else. Strara made it, used it fantastically in his works. Uh, it was done uh, fantastically in The Conformist, where there is this combination of red and blue at the background, and together with Woody Allen, Allen in, his, in his movie. We also see the perfect combination of blue with red. Blue and red are not opposite colors, but still uh, in the opposition, they are nearby. So, of course, I would agree that uh, the red color is, of course, physiology, it is blood, and it is birth and life as well. But it is very important what the red color is surrounded with. Just a simple example. If, for example, we have a lecture and we put him on the stage and everything will be pink and the lecture would be wearing something green and he will talk quite loudly, but the interest of the audience would be minimal. If we change the stage, if everything is red on the stage 
and there would be red flags behind the talker, so people would perceive him as a person who talks quite loudly. That's why all revolutionists used uh, the red color when they decorated uh, the tribune, when they decorated the stage, and everybody, well, anarchists, communists, or who not, used this. Well, very interesting, yes. By the way, Stararo is very serious to the combination of different colors. And I know that quite frequently he had uh, certain conflicts with the directors of the movie uh, when they spoke about the dualism, about the antagonistic colors. And of course, any drama works wonderfully when we have a conflict. And people like it when they have this drama, some conflict. The same is true about the colors. Well, I hope that if you have time left, we'll talk about the combination of colors at the end. In my theory, when people have some additional uh, colors, not only one color, but some supplementary colors, the person starts feeling quite well in this atmosphere. Well, and it's easier for him to find the point uh, of, uh, of uh, his localization. If, for example, we put a person in this completely red room inside and we put someone in a green suit, probably the person would be saved from the stroke. But if we have only one color, then the body, the organism uh, would protest, it would uh, work uh, more aggressively. In uh, the cinematography, it's very seldom that only one color works. Uh, it's very rare occasions, uh, like this Twin Peaks uh, Lynch's room uh, in the movie. That's quite an example of this. So now let's go to the next color. Now uh, I suggest we should discuss the black color. For Stararo, the black color is something subconscious. Andrei, what is black in physiology? Well, from the point of view of physiology, the black color is when we don't see anything. When we close our eyes, we have blackness. Well, physiologically, we mostly react to some darkness or some dark blue color. And physiologically, it is also quite substan uh, substantiated. Uh, it's some fear. It's some fear or anxiety, not speculation, some people speak, say. Well, our vision is oriented to the perception of the color during daylight because we might, uh, we, we have to see a predator at a distance. Our night vision, our night uh, sight is very weak. That's why uh, the human beings were, uh, were defenseless during the night. They had to find a cave or some protection or some fire to, to hide from the darkness from the dark forces, from the twilight. Uh, that's actually the effect uh, we get from the black and white cinematography, because the twilight, this combination of black-white is something fearful. It, it's anxiety when uh, or we anticipate some problem. That is what the black color is from the point of physiology. Well, actually, when we have been preparing for this stream, I liked it very much when Andre said that from the point of view of some doctors, uh, this is uh, one of the proofs that we are aliens to this planet. All other animals on the planet Earth are quite accommodated uh, for the twilight. For a human being, it's something uh, alien. What is the black color for you? Well, uh, it was very interesting to listen to Andre. It's such a nice acquaintance for me. Thank you. And uh, well, uh, I'm thinking now, well, all colors we can uh, somehow attribute uh, to very important uh, masterpieces of art. So. To the question, what uh, association does the black color uh, have for you? And of course, 99% of the people, even those who haven't seen the black square of Malevich, will name this painting. 
And so, oh, what is the conclusion uh, of this painting? What is the idea of this painting? My students in our Moscow cinematography school, uh, they have the task uh, to enliven uh, this painting. Well, uh, what is the magic of the black color? Well, the first association is the black square. The second association would be the black hole, something dealing with space. And to my mind, the black color is fear. And I'm coming to this, that if the first color was passion, then the second color, the black color, is fear. And as we are the masters of the subconscious of the audience, and we try to influence our viewers, uh, we try to affect the people through the color, with the help of the color, and with the help of the black color, we can put the person into the state of anxiety, of fear, of anticipation of some information. With the red color, the person is not anticipating any information. It's just a flash for him. He, he gets excited and that's it. And the red color is very active. It influences the audience. The black color, vice versa, takes away the attention of the viewer. It's, it's my subjective point of view and I use it in my works. Well, and of course, all expressionism is uh, black and white because uh, they, I mean, the cinematography, they didn't have any colors at their disposal. And the artists also used quite a lot of the black color. Mariana Verovkina, for example, she used quite a lot of the black color of dark blue. And Munken, it, in his scream, we can also see quite a lot of black. And so, if we speak about the black color uh, as some void or emptiness, and this emptiness to me as an artist is not white, it is black. Well, uh, uh, speaking from the part of a cameraman, I say, well, the black color will never be black, will never be perceived as black if we don't see any other bright objects uh, on, uh, on the screen. And we always try to explain it to the director. We try to explain to him that if there are no flashes, no flashes of uh, white, the black will not be perceived as black. And uh, while, well, uh, to my mind, of course, when we use the black color, we refer to some subconscious things. Well, it has the aura of uh, some morning things. And uh, it has something to do with the morning uh, in the in the cultures of many uh, nations, because that's the end of life, and the, the black color is the color of mourning. Then uh, in uh, physics, so we have a notion of the absolutely black body, the body that does not emit anything. And we have to, uh, to bring up its temperature so that it would irradiate uh, something. 3,200 kelvins, uh, uh, this is the temperature of the absolutely black body, and this is a very intriguing term. So the black color is the absence of color, and when we close our eyes and we try to look inside ourselves, probably subconsciously, we, we see this blackness. We don't receive any visual information and we try to get it from our inner images. And I just want to add a few words. So uh, no matter how long we are going to discuss different colors, all colors irradiate. The black color, to my mind, does not irradiate, it absorbs. That's uh, when we talk about the subconscious influence of different colors. So uh, the colors influence uh, the people uh, differently, but the black color just just takes uh, and takes out inside itself. And the same is true from the point of view of phys physics. So uh, as I have already mentioned, this absolutely black body. 
So let's let's continue. Uh, may may I add a few words? Uh, speaking about uh, the black colors, the color of mourning. So uh, this is the transition from the physiology to the psychological assessment because in India, the color of mourning is the white color. So this is the psychological assessment uh, of the of uh, the black color. Well, from the point of view of uh, physiology so you may have a certain uh, experiment you take two sheets of paper black and white and you put your palm above these two sheets so uh, when your palm is above the black color it gets warm when your palm is above the white colored sheet it is is a cool yes uh, this is a true story but of course it's not from the visual uh, idea but we are talking this uh, from the point of view of the infrared uh, spectrum uh, that's why we use uh, the the tops for water and we paint them in the black color because it absorbs the the rays of the sun and transforms it into energy this visual energy is being transformed uh, the energy that we perceive uh, with our eyes uh, he, here uh, of course uh, this this is the infrared spectrum so we do not uh, perceive it well actually the white color can also reflect reflect quite a lot of things uh, for example of the, the white color can reflect the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. And uh, here we talk about uh, different ranges of the spectrum. Now we are discussing only the visual part of the spectrum, the part that we can really see. Uh, and of course, there are uh, parts of the spectrum that we cannot see. And usually these parts are quite dangerous for the human beings the uh, infrared uh, the ultraviolet uh, frequencies are could be dangerous uh, for the people and uh, they are invisible for us then uh, going back to Starara uh, I want to repeat so he used to say that each color has its own vibration its own frequency its own singularity and from this point of view of course it's very interesting uh, to uh, to discuss uh, the color, the colors, the seven colors of the rainbow, uh, the seven notes of music, musical notes. And of course, if you know how to work with the colors, you can use this and you can actually compose any melody with the colors. So you can make a major music, uh, you can make minor music. And it's really, indeed, very interesting. So now let's go to the orange color, uh, warm color, and family relations. Uh, well, we talk about the seven musical notes and seven colors, it's just a chance. And uh, of course, we have to say a big thank you to Newton. Uh, just because uh, he, were, he had musical grammar and he had a musical ear. So when he took the white ray and put it through the glass prism, he had this spectrum, uh, this spectrum, and so he decided to use the same seven colors at the se seven musical notes. Of course, uh, there are not just seven colors in life. Uh, there could be more, it could be fewer. Well, if I'm not mistaken, Levitan has more than 700 shades of green in, in his paintings. Uh, so this figure uh, seven is just an average uh, figure which is uh, familiar to us because, well, the orange color is not expressed red or the red color that has quite a lot of yellow in it. So it's a mixture of colors. So from the point of view of physiology, uh, we may talk about the division of colors uh, through the theory of the oriental medicine. So five elements, five colors, which has its own characteristics uh, and they have a certain relationship with a certain body organ because the brain is very, uh, uh, is very little 
and, and so this coordination uh, of the color with its influence on the body uh, is uh, uh, quite clear. And so we influence the hormonal activity, the emotional state, and the uh, different um, behavior of a person who has been influenced by a certain color. So the orange color is a certain undercolor of the transition between the red color and the yellow color. Well, we'll talk later on about the yellow color properly. So we have basic colors and we have some intermediary transition colors. And so it the, the color in this case depends on the content of the degree of this or that color in this combination. So uh, when we talk about the uh, orange color, when there's the predominance of red, it's passion. When there's the predominance of yellow, it's a digestion. Well, as is now, uh, it, it, the flow is yours. Well, the orange color is my favorite color. Actually, I'm not quite prepared for today's meeting. Uh, somehow I always uh, have something orange uh, uh, in my wardrobe. Uh, it happens uh, unconsciously. And so all people who know me, they know that uh, me, it's the orange color. If somebody wants to mimic me, they would definitely put on something orange. Well, the uh, orange color is my favorite color. So, well, I fully agree with Andre because, uh, oh, well, we cannot consider it as a separate color, uh, the orange color. So uh, it's the red color. The opposite to the red is the green. Uh, the red surrounded by the green color or the green color surrounded by the red color, they work individually. And so when we talk about the, the orange color, we go to this red color sphere. So the opposite uh, of the orange shade of the red color uh, is uh, a certain uh, a certain color and of course we use it in our works so we use its influence on the people and this opposite color to the orange color is gray color so if it's a gray uh, if it's cool gray then we need a uh, warm orange if we have a cool orange then we take warm uh, gray so and my teacher uh, well, the uh, master of color, the artist Barisov, so he used to teach us how to thrust one color into another color. So he was talking about the opposite colors. He would teach us to take a brush and use the brush uh, or, or with the opposite fi fibers. And so we thrust uh, this brush uh, into the main color and then this uh, Mm, crepitation, this trembling of the opposite color of the orange inside the great color would take place. And it's not that I just like the orange color, I like the orange color in combination with the great color. So what do I feel when I have it? So I have uh, the, uh, the, the energy. If, for example, I wake up in the morning and I'm not feeling very well, but if I put on an orange t-shirt and I put on my gray boots with orange laces, I have this uh, income of energy. So somehow this uh, works at uh, uh, the level of physiology. So what else uh, to say about the orange color? So what pictures are connected in my perception perception in connection with the orange color well matisse has the orange color uh, and uh, matisse used it very actively well and of course a formist used quite a lot of orange because well formist uh, went to their africa and uh, well they were saturated by wild colors by mask of tribes and of course there was this orange color and all this and uh, they uh, demonstrated later on uh, this color in their works and Matisse used quite a lot of orange uh, in his painting with a fish uh, well of course the fi fishes are not red they are orange and the dancing boys are also orange not red so it's also a fantastic work by Matisse Yes, uh, yes, of course, uh, uh, this 
Well, uh, I, I, uh, sorry to speed you up, I just want to, to go through all the colors. And so my idea is about the orange color, so why Starara singles it out? Well, actually, uh, the orange color is the color of the flame, the color of the fire. And uh, when we talked about the black color, so people used uh, to find shelter in caves and they made fires, probably quite intuitively, we made the next story about home, about the fireplace. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, Adis probably has a, uh, his roots in those people who worshipped uh, fire. And, of course, this combination of orange with gray, uh, probably it has something to do with it. Oh, of course, together with our na national cultural code, we have uh, this inner zip code, uh, which is quite packed and, of course, it uh, manifests later on. Well, very interesting things we managed to discover itself. Now we talk about the yellow color. Well, Strara thinks that the yellow color is when we perceive ourselves as a human being. Andrei, well, we talk about uh, certain subconscious things. When we think about some traumas or some positive changes in our life, well, why the yellow color is the basic color. It's the color of the sun. It gives warmth. You will never die from warmth. And we used to say in Siberia, there is never too much of warmth. You will never die uh, from warmth. This is what gives us uh, life. Uh, we talked about people, we mentioned people who worshipped fire. So the highest uh, temperature flame uh, is, uh, well, white, then yellow, then orange, red, and then we go into the dark. Well, what is the yellow color from the point of your physiology? Well, first of all, the simple thing is the ripe fruits. The, well, ri ripe uh, food, uh, the green apple, for example, is sour, but the yellow or red uh, apple is sweet. And so the yellow color is very much connected with digestion. In the oriental medicine, the yellow color deals directly with the pancreas. Well, from the point of view of physiology, it's impossible to digest and to take uh, the good from the food if uh, right... Uh, if right straight away from uh, a meal you start rushing, well, uh, there is such a joke. So two people meet and one of them say, well, you know, I don't know what is happening to me, a very strange thing. Whenever I eat, I always feel sleepy. Well, uh, but that is what happens in real life. So uh, when we have eaten, we have this state of melancholy, uh, the state of reflection. This is the call of reflection, the so-called Pichorin syndrome. Uh, this is the physiology of the yellow color. Besides, it's the brightest color uh, when there's lots of smoke. So when we have smoke, when we have fog, the best color is the yellow color. Another thing, after 40 years, all people, uh, 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 the corner of uh, all people becomes yellowish and we all perceive the world in this yellow color well of course we have some changes with uh, our ear with our hearing or we have the changes with our sight with the vision probably that's why uh, the older we get uh, the more uh, we are getting attached uh, to Cool, cool sources of light. So cool light is uh, more preferable for aged people. Now, uh, Addis, well, uh, the yellow color is a pure color, and we can uh, speak openly about it, and the opposite is the blue color. Just by itself, if we talk just uh, the, the pure yellow color, uh, you remember, Andre has mentioned already, we have physiology and we have psychology. Uh, so, now, if you want uh, to influence people, well, first of all, it's honor, it's light, it's some prize, it's some award. If we talk uh, psychology, 
and uh, if we want to say that there is very little honor the opposite side of honor what do we do we give a little bit of yellow a little bit of yellow uh, surrounded by lots of blue well that's why all insignia over the military men uh, they have everything in the yellow color the buttons and everything the epaulets from the point of view of physiology the yellow color is of course melancholy it's reflex its reflection and i would add this word melancholy to it and again probably it's my subjective point of view but uh, T to me, the yellow color is melancholic. It does not make you act immediately. It does not affect you directly. Because while well, melancholy is a great friend of a disease, that's why the yellow color is the color of a disease. Well, I think it's, it's fantastic what we are doing now. Or we, we give uh, new ideas to the color. So if you want to sum up, sum up the yellow color, it's melancholy and a disease. Well, perfect. I think that we have talked uh, enough about the yellow color. We, we have uh, we have been, uh, we, we tried to be very concise. Now we have a next color, the green color, and by Stararo, it's the process of learning. From the point of view of physiology, the green color is, of course, reviving after winter. So new grass, the green of spring, is the new season when everything becomes alive again. And this is the season when people get lots of herbs and green stuff, green foods uh, in their food. Well, because during the winter season, everything is frozen. There is a direct connection between the work of the liver and uh, the sight, the eyesight with the green color. There is a Chinese saying, people who watch the, the green, the new green uh, grass will always uh, have uh, perfect eyesight. Well, emotionally, the green color is uh, uh, some excitement, some uh, uh, irritation, because during springtime, everybody is looking for a partner because they don't have uh, a lot of time uh, uh, to, to, to make a family. And so, from the point of view of the oriental medicine, the green color is anger. The excessive function uh, is uh, anger. And uh, from uh, a person who is short-tempered and very angry, they were talking about bile uh, uh, being present in, in his body. So, the, the green color, that's why, uh, is a very intensive color the color of uh, the work of the liver that takes toxins uh, away from the body. And so when uh, it works okay, so the body functions well. That's why uh, the tables in libraries are green, the billiard tables are green, the card tables are green. It is made so that the eyes are not tired and they are focused very well. So that's why it's uh, the color of activity and preservation of energy. Adis, uh, well, now it's your turn. Well, I'm talking about this. Uh, I'm thinking about the green color. It's a pure color, the opposite to the red color. Everything opposite to the red is green. But we have lots and lots of shades of uh, green. Uh, well, Andre has mentioned already uh, these different shades. The cobalt uh, shades of the green color, they're, they're more than three shades than the emerald uh, uh, green. Well, what not? And when you go to this or that shade of the green color, we have uh, this variety of green. And so it's impossible probably to describe it in one word. Well, probably it's the word uh, life. Life. Uh, is, but, uh, well, what would happen if the sun changes its spectrum? So in this case, the trees, instead of being green, would be brown. 
so uh, the the point is that just at this present moment, uh, according to the present conditions, we see the trees green. But if the conditions change, it would be different. But in our psychology, the green is connected with the life, and. I think uh, it's correct, I agree with this, but I would like to add something. Uh, so uh, when we talk about a certain national code, uh, green is the classical national code. In the Russian classical uh, national code, the green color is present and it is present very actively. It's cobalt, dark green. It's uh, the combination uh, of green and brownish red and ochre, yellowish, uh, uh, goldenish. Uh, and so this uh, combination uh, gives us the visual national Russian code. Probably there is some of uh, the yellow color through Okhra, but the green is very active in the Russian classical code. Well, that's it. Well, what I would like to add about the green color, uh, well, uh, I would say that the green is in the middle of the spectrum. And uh, so there was a period when, at the beginning, the monitors, uh, the uh, screens of the computer monitors were green. The luminescent lamps were also green because it was considered that we perceive information, we uh, take the information better in the green color. And if you remember the uh, the matrix movie, you remember the figure. Uh, on the screen of the computer also green and the uh, gas resolution lamps they were also green because they would give this greenish color because we can see better uh, well uh, and people say that the spectrum is not full but uh, when we use the green color but that's a separate story and we'll talk about it some other time but the, the green color is one of the basic colors it's very energetic it is very uh, calm, probably that is why uh, it uh, it stands out so well, uh, the background of the red color. So I would call it a very informative color. So let's go on. So the next color, let's talk about the blue color by Stararo. The blue color is, is mind is reason. Well, Andrei, oh, what can you say about it? Well, I have already mentioned it because the blue color is the pre-black color. So when the sun goes down, first we have uh, the uh, blue twilight and then this blue gets darker and darker. So we know that our eye vision is uh, very sharp when we have light, daylight. Uh, and well, actually, in our eye, uh, we we have cones, uh, uh, we have cones and rods, and the rods are not sensitive uh, uh, when it gets dark. So when the re the concentration of light is uh, very low, uh, our cones do not work. Only the rods work. And from the point of view of psychology, uh, when it gets dark, uh, it's a kind of, of uh, a quest, uh, a quest, uh, uh, a quest for a shelter, a quest for a cave, for a cave. Uh, uh, we have to get away from danger. So the twilight is the pre-night uh, period, the pre-fear period. So the blue color is the color of fear. And uh, well, you know that the frightened person uh, gets very pale, bluish pale, because the blood circulation of the skin changes, the vessels uh, get dense, and so the circulation is worse, and the uh, discoloration of the skin gets bluish. So that's the color of fear. Well, Adis, uh, yes, we have already uh, touched upon the blue color when we have been discussing the black color. And again, I'm of the same 
opinion as uh, Andre is so the blue uh, color the dark blue color is used quite a lot of impressionists I, I have already mentioned Marlene Virovkin and she's one of my favorite uh, Mariana Virovkin uh, one of my favorite artists and in her works uh, the blue color is very active and uh, for that period there was no term expressionism for painting and of course, oh, one of the uh, pre-founders of this there was Van Gogh. Uh, you remember his painting, uh, The View from a Psychic Asylum, uh, when in this dark blue sky we see the yellowish, uh, uh, yellowish circles. And so what do we see? We see this blue, the color of fear. Well, actually, uh, I know how to put it. Well, uh, actually, mind, it's something we do not understand. And when we do not understand something, it it, it always borders uh, with fear, with some secret. And this is just uh, the painting of Van Gogh. There is nothing good in his picture. And we know that Van Gogh is a post-impressionist. And uh, post-impressionism never existed as a term because it's they were impressionists and uh, they just came later. And uh, so the excitement, the painting excitement, which was done uh, by Van Gogh, the only work he did from memory, it's his sensation, his feeling, something that comes from the inside. And that's why the blue color, this blue color comes out of our subconsciousness. And of course, oh, we may connect it with uh, the knowledge, uh, with our experience, with our vexations. Well, perfect. Now, if uh, actually, so that we have enough time, so that uh, and this is not short of time, uh, I suggest that we combine two colors indigo and purple okay let's do it separately i can manage it well uh indigo what can you say about the indigo color well uh, i i would repeat that that's the end of the blue spectrum this is one of the degrees of the uh, blue color but in this case uh, i would like to add something else. Uh, it's always talks about uh, opposite colors, and this is true, not because they exist, but because our vision apparatus uh, is constructed like this. If we look at the yellow color and then look at the white wall, we'll see the blue color, because the receptor of the yellow color is tied, and the blue receptors can continue to work. The same happens with the red color. If we look at the red color and then look at the white uh, wall, then we'll see the blue. So uh, if we don't talk, uh, if we don't go deeper into biochemistry, uh, that's what we can state. Yes, the green color is the middle of the spectrum and are we orient ourselves very well in it we see many shades in it uh, we can orient myself in the forest can see the predators can see the food and uh, blue purple etc well there is a concept that says that the purple is uh, the color of psychic instability well, you see the painting of Van Gogh uh, of this purple sky and uh, the uh, the sounds of uh, birds flying. So it, it goes closer to psychiatry. <laughs> well, well, uh, probably a few words about the green color. It's very interesting. There was a research about the colors, and it says uh, that uh, the green spectrum and the brown spectrum of females is wider. Uh, probably the roots uh, go back to the ancient times when uh, women would go picking up herbs and berries and mushrooms.
And so while well, actually uh, women perceive more shades uh, of colors, and those people who select uh, colors in the publishing house, in the cinematography, those who stage uh, the colors, these posts were always occupied by women. And now with the computer technology, uh, we have more men doing this. And uh, actually, I remember uh, a person, a man who worked as a colorist uh, in the uh, Gorky filmmaking studio, because when he would try to choose the colors, he, he would, uh, in reality, choose uh, anything but what you really wanted. Well, actually, we have talked about the purple color. Uh, as, oh, well, uh, I, I want to add uh, something else. Uh, so the purple color is my second favorite color after the orange color. And in uh, many of my paintings, I use this color. So actually, I use orange uh, rarely compared to the purple color. And probably it is true that the purple color uh, is uh, used by the artists. Well, uh, or when we talk about the artists, they are always uh, walking along the edge. Well, uh, compared to normal, uh, uh, to insane people, the artists, when they cross the border, they actually manage to come back and most of the artists uh, temporarily become insane and then they return from this insanity. So uh, the purple color is something that cannot be perceived by our consciousness. Starara connects the purple color, and uh, thanks to this, uh, Newton managed uh, to, to close up his color circle, because the purple color does not exist in nature. It's a combination and mixture of the red color and the blue color. We may speak about the purple color as a combination this uh, of the red and the blue colors. And so it's very difficult. Uh, to transmit this color, so uh, to reproduce it, to show it on the film is practically impossible, very difficult. So this mixture of uh, red and blue. And in the old times, the cameraman knew that oh, when we shoot a, a movie, uh, we'll never manage to transmit the purple color, the Fuji film company actually had a special film uh, that was devised uh, to be able to transmit the real purple color uh, on the film. And so this mixture of uh, the red color and the blue color of different parts of the spectrum, uh, actually, uh, thanks to this mixture, Newton managed uh, to close up his uh, col colors circle. That is uh, the, the wonderful thing about the Newton system, besides uh, he, his idea of the musical notes. And so thanks to the purple color, we are able uh, to orient ourselves uh, among the different colors of this color circle. Well, actually, uh, we have only one color left to be discussed. It's the white color. So Strara characterizes it as a harmony, uh, the end of, of the way, of the path. And so the white color has all colors in it. Well, Andre, what is the white color? From the physiological point of view, I may say that the white color is the color of the air. It is what we inhale, what we breathe with. But when it is cold outside, we exhale the white color, uh, this steam that uh, goes uh, from our mouth uh, in cold weather. The same happens above the rivers in cold weather. So uh, it has to do with the function of the lungs, uh, with the respiration system. But uh, when we talk uh, from the psychological point of view, the white color is sadness. Because when the person is sad, he sighs, he sighs very deeply. And so probably a little bit of melancholy 
uh, because the yellow color and the white color, uh, in terms of medicine, they're very close. I have already uh, spoke about the yellow color in terms of uh, digestion, and without breathing, there is no digestion. So if we cannot breathe properly, they would, we will never be able to digest properly. So if uh, this breathing is not enough, when or we sigh deeply, uh, this is the state of deep sadness. That's uh, that's uh, the white color, the color of breathing and the color of sadness. Probably that is why it has something to do with mourning in the Indian culture, the white color, because that's the end of the road. And it's now, you, uh, well, to my mind, uh, uh, to add to what has already been uh, said, the white uh, color to me is the color of death. I don't know, it's not by accident that the Indians uh, has the white color for mourning. Is that the case? Well, yes. Well, I have never thought about it, but um, for me, definitely, the uh, the black color is not the color of mourning for me. The black color is grief. So when we grieve about somebody, it's the black color, but the death itself is the white color. So Andre has said that the white color is the color of the lungs. Well, and uh, it occurred to me that in the Turkish language, literally, liver means the, the in the Turkish language uh, the lungs uh, are called white liver so when they do the autopsy uh, they uh, see that the lungs are white in color what else is white for me the white color is lightness so on the one hand it's the death because nobody is afraid of death people are afraid of uh, sickness uh, but when we come to death it's the white color it's this white color at the end of the tunnel that's why the white color is the color of death for me at the same time the white color is definitely the birth of something that's the so the source of uh, radiation illumination and that's why it seems to me that is why we at the same time like the white color and we're afraid of the white color well do we use it in uh, painting in filmmaking of course we we do and i like uh, to to use the white color and i was brought up as a normal artist when we were taught uh, to use uh, two shades of white, uh, cool and warm, and two shades of black, uh, cool and warm. And of course, it, it is possible to do it. The Teton white paint and uh, the Zinc white paint. And uh, when we talk about the black color, it's different sources, the burnt bone, for example, etc., etc. And we use this combination, and it is good. Well, uh, colleagues, well, actually, I'm I'm so glad that we have managed to go so deep into the colors. We managed to discuss all the spectrum colors uh, by Starara. We spoke about the Newton uh, uh, color circle. And thank you very much that I have managed uh, to get you together. Thank you for finding time, Andre uh, and Adis. Uh, I hope you agree that our work uh, today is really very interesting. So it would be uh, the the food uh, for, for thinking for many students, for uh, cultural learners. And uh, well, it's been a pleasant occasion for me. Well, uh, it was a surprise that uh, this encounter this meeting with the doctor was so so interesting uh, I, I couldn't understand what we are going to talk about with the doctor in terms of colors but well you know I even uh, I have forgot about the time it was indeed very interesting I have started to think that probably it would be great 
uh, to teach uh, students, students, future artists, uh, whom I supervise. So probably it would be great uh, to show the colors to them from the point of view of psychology and physiology. Well, actually, I have a subject, color study color studying and uh, we teach this course, this subject to the students. But uh, it seems to me that uh, the approach we have used today, this, uh, uh, these cones uh, and rods uh, in the structure of our vision system, our sight, uh, uh, sight structure, well, we use it, uh, but subconsciously, but if somebody knows the fundamental basis, the scientific basis for it, that would be even better. Well, and so thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and thank you, Ivan, for the invitation. From my part, uh, well, uh, at the beginning, uh, actually, uh, uh, I couldn't understand how the my, my profession could be connected with the visual arts. But now I see that it would be very practical to combine uh, the research results of the uh, people of science, of uh, doctors, and uh, 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 the knowledge of artists. It would be interesting to combine it. And uh, so now we know that we can uh, mixture colors, we can combine co colors, uh, and we can do it not just uh, by our practical research, but we can uh, uh, we can actually act upon a, a certain uh, scientific basis. And I think it's very interesting. I think it would be great to continue this cycle. Yes, I, I, I agree. It could be a kind of a cycle. So a one hour lecture, well, probably not a lecture, because I don't like the word lecture as it is. It would be a discussion. Seven uh, meetings, seven discussions, and each of them would be devoted to uh, to each particular color because we haven't had enough time to talk uh, about every color or we haven't touched upon the artists, uh, the paintings. Well, actually, we have been talking about uh, Starar today and he's our fourth talker at this meeting. Well, uh, I want to say that uh, artists and uh, cameramen are the people uh, who are closest uh, by the tools they use. And so the students who follow these two uh, programs, uh, uh, they communicate uh, most frequently, the artists and the cameraman, and they uh, deal with each other and they understand each other. When the artists say, well, do you know what I mean by the word composition? And the cameraman say, of course, I understand. And when the cameraman says, do you know what is a uh, light shade combination and the artist agrees that uh, he confirms that he understands what it is and when we talk psychology the artists are closer to directors but when we talk uh, about things or, or one thing well it should be very tender it should be well then the cameramen are closer to the artists Yes, and when we talk about the harmony uh, of the frame uh, of the shot, for me, Straro is uh, Tishan, Tishan and Veranese, and I, I, I remember his arts. Uh, I, I remember uh, his other movie, Apocalypse Now, and uh, I remember the directors who used to work with him, or Bertolucci, for example, or Woody Allen, Coppola. Uh, those directors who worked uh, with Starara. So in this, uh, in what we see on the screen, I see the rebirth of, uh, of the arts, of real arts, of Renaissance arts. And now, well, uh, I know, well, I'm an artist. I know lots of artists who worked in the movies uh, I have just enumerated, but the cameraman, actually, this is the person 
who is on this bridge, uh, the, this transition from reality into unreality. And this is the person who presses the button. And actually this person does this and he produces this image. Uh, and in this image we have Veronese and we have uh, Botticelli and we can print out this frame and we can say, well, look how beautiful it is. See uh, how rich in colors it is. Well, there are, of course, other cameramen, uh, and uh, and when they want uh, to say something very nice, uh, they they speak about. Uh, in fact, some speak about Starara. Well, actually, uh, what people like Starara for? They uh, like him for his colors, not for his composition, but for his colors because there is this illumination, illuminating colors. So I would like to add a few words just to finish up uh, our today's meeting. It's fantastic that we have uh, this idea to follow this cycle and to follow uh, the all the colors of the spectrum, because this uh, subject is limitless. Today you have just touched upon it. And then uh, we talk about cameraman, uh, about artists, uh, while our uh, one uh, Oh, I just mentioned the person who presses the button. Well, there is a joke. Well, I'm the person who can met you, uh, mutilate you with just one finger. Uh, well, who are you? Uh, well, I am a cameraman because the cameraman uh, with the big letters, the person who is in the middle of the process of filmmaking. So if something goes wrong technically with the colors, with the green tone, into red or red turns into green well it would be a catastrophe well because sometimes this happens even in professional filmmaking and when uh, I myself uh, just uh, touched uh, paints and I started to paint uh, with the oils Adis even saw uh, some of my works and yes uh, I was at the exhibition I think uh, one year before the, the last, and when I brought uh, paints and oils uh, to my colleagues, uh, to the cameramen, and I wanted to teach them, to, to ask them to, to mixture the colors so that they could feel what happens if you mix green with the yellow, or to, towards what direction it would go. So I'm really very joyful that we have had this meeting today, that it has been so informative and to you personally that you have found time for coming and I hope uh, that we'll manage uh, to turn it into to transform it into a cycle because it's a really deep scientific talk thank you once again for this meeting I'm happy that I managed uh, to to get you together for this talk well thank you everyone for your attention uh, hope uh, that our discussion uh, will have some uh, feedback. Well, please uh, get whatever responses you'll manage to get by our next meeting. Of course, I will do this. We'll post it on Facebook and on the YouTube channel. And I hope uh, we'll get the comments. Uh, and it would be interesting for us at our next meeting when we'll take some other color and we'll discuss some color in depth and of course it would be great if you the audience will ask questions will make comments that would make it even greater so that's it thank you thank you till next time